Hello everybody. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to present to you today. The other presentations are focused on the um, more technical aspects of retrofit measures. My case study is more concerned with the practical project delivery issues involved in large scale, whole streets, whole community regeneration programs. Uh, by way of introduction, that's myself. I'm a technical officer with the East Riding of Yorkshire Council. Um, the agenda today will cover a brief introduction to the town of Goul, uh, the project scope, the consultation process, quantitative and quality outcomes, um, a few pretty pictures thrown in to try and keep your interest. And uh, to conclude, I'll do a summary of the, the main project, some current issues, and uh, a considered view after three, four years of experience of dealing with these types of projects. The town of Goul itself is a, a small industrial town with excellent transport links due to its location, but which has had to adjust to the loss of traditional industries and the influx of migrant workers over recent years. Other issues around the time that we were considering uh, commencing uh, this, the regeneration works was the fact that there were areas of multiple, multiple deprivation. The community at that time was low in confidence and there'd been a lack of investment in private sector housing stock. And I will emphasize throughout this presentation that we are talking about private sector housing stock as opposed to social housing. Uh, that has its implications, of course. The total project area consisted of 55 streets containing 2,400 pre-1919 terraces, all of solid wall construction in various states of disrepair, showing signs of wear and tear from 100 years of use. The major driver was to improve the aesthetic fabric uh, to initially 700 properties. And one of the issues we had with was that we had a rather limited budget and we needed to um, maximise impact within that uh, rather limited budget. Uh, just going back to uh, my point earlier on, the, these properties are privately owned uh, with a mix of tenure, uh, probably 50-50 split between owner-occupied and private rented. Participation was voluntary, therefore we had to conduct a very intensive programme of individual negotiations with 700 plus uh, owners, tenants, landlords, you name it. Uh, this contrasts quite starkly with uh, the situation in social housing where for the most part there was only one owner to negotiate with. The initial aims of the scheme were to improve the outward appearance of the properties. As you can see from the photographs, I, I talked about the 100 years of wear and tear and that's quite visible in those photographs there. So to improve the outward appearance, increase confidence in the area and provide an incentive for, for further investment from the owners, landlords, outside uh, partners. It's quite interesting to see the development of the programme. Um, energy efficiency itself became an increasingly important element. It wasn't there um, initially. We were just talking about titivating the properties and giving them a bit of a facelift. But as time went on, energy efficiency became an increasingly important element from two points of view, really. One was obviously the energy efficiency improvements that it could bring. But obviously, as you can see from the nature of the properties, the, the, the aesthetic appearance could be improved by the fitting of the uh, external wall insulation and the various finishes. It also became quite apparent that there were uh, opportunities to increase the scope and add value to the scheme by adopting a more holistic approach. The consultation process itself was very extensive. Um, as you can see, public meetings, we provided drawings to the owners for them to consider and uh, approve. We had a very heavy program of door knocking, on street discussions with owners and tenants, press releases at all stages, regular newsletters, street celebration events. I can't emphasize enough the amount of time and effort spent on A, identifying the owners of 700 individual properties, B, communicating, engaging, explaining and persuading the process. Uh, C, obtaining the consent to the works, which without their consent, the works couldn't go ahead at all. And finally, maintaining relations throughout the program and beyond. I mentioned there that we, we, we identified the, the, the potential for adding value to the scheme. This was done by establishing links with all sorts of partners, uh, commercial sector within the 
the area. We, we, we spoke with shop owners who had flats above the shops who uh, realistically couldn't be included in the scheme, but they they came on board and, and, and paid their own contribution towards the, the cost of the works. External partnerships, as you can see, established with various bodies. Probably the most important one was uh, the establishment of a, a working group of internal partners. Um, all these people came together and adjusted their uh, programs, uh, access sources of funding, in order to sort of bring added value to the scheme through through various methods. And we we did conduct um, sort of uh, social events, community events, where we uh, used our sustainable communities people to, to engage with people and find out what the issues were. And wherever we could, we we built those issues into the scheme and tried to address them. A couple of the photos there. One shows you an area where, which was heavy in in fly tipping. Uh, this this photograph here. And basically what we do, worked with our environmental control people, they access some funding so we could actually provide 200 metres of fencing which which helped to prevent the fly tipping. We also did some on-street work with uh, tenants and residents and the local children in the area. A small technical slide there, uh, the system we used was WebFM XP, uh, 60 to 70 millimetres of phenolic insulation boards with a mixture of finishes including monocouche, scrape quilt render, acrylic render, and what, the one that I particularly like, which was the brick slip. As you can see here, we use um, uh, the insulation board, uh, the polystyrene carrier, and then uh, the finish was the brick slip. Typical U values were reduced from 2.1 down to 0.27. In terms of quantitative outcomes, 700 properties refurbished between 2008 and 2011. Uh, carried out improvements to 10 commercial properties at the owner's expense. A uh, big programme of loft insulation, including hard to treat areas, which, which had a major impact on, on SAP ratings. 99% uh, participation in the scheme, and, and as I mentioned earlier, we trialled various finishes. In terms of added value, we, uh, in monetary terms, there was £300,000 worth of leverage from internal and external partnerships. And we, we had affected streetscape improvements to paths, roads, street lighting, street furniture, etc. And we refurbished a community shop at the main contractor's expense. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And we became involved in social issues. We identified social issues, illegal tipping, parking issues, antisocial behaviour. And wherever we could, we'd address those as part of the scheme. Another technical slide, just to show one example. This wasn't a typical example, but on this particular terrace, we're achieving you know, SAP increases of 20 points and uh, one-third reductions in CO2 emissions and annual fuel costs. Qualitative outcomes, well, 99% satisfaction from participants. As you can see, some of the adjectives there, people feeling happier, safer, and having a greater sense of community. The interesting thing from my point of view was that we also um, surveyed people who didn't participate in the scheme. Their properties weren't included, but also lived in the town. And they, 86% of them, felt that changing streets had improved the image of Google, so that was quite pleasing as well. Just a couple of um, more detailed feedback from some of the residents. Uh, the one that I always refer to is th this lady who says that when you improve a property, and the rest of the street looks tatty, you feel like you're fighting a losing battle. But when all the street looks nice, it lifts your heart and makes you feel proud. And I think that's where the whole street programs uh, really benefit the community. As an individual, it can only affect your particular property. With the whole street program, we can affect the whole street and indeed the whole area. A um, couple of photographs. This one shows the, the extent of the program. At, at various stages, we, we could be working on between 200 to 250 properties at one time. Uh, that's a pair of semi-detached properties that uh, had a mixture of the, the render finish and the brick slip finish. This is the um, local community shop uh, which I spoke about. We identified this as being a very popular part of the community and the shop, as you can see, was quite run down. And we worked quite hard with the, the, the contractors to persuade them to, to refurbish it, this and all at their own expense, which again went down very well with the community. This is an example of the brick slip finish, but it also identifies another issue. We worked very hard in trying to maintain as where we could some of the aesthetic and architectural features of the original properties. So we can see the door heads and the window heads 
we replicated them as best we could by using a company who would, who would provide those for us. And again, that, I think you'll agree that's um, infinitely better than just going straight across with either render or brick slip. Now, to summarise, the Change of Treat scheme has improved perceptions of the town, engages community, produced high satisfaction levels, encouraged further investment, reduced emissions and fuel poverty, and by definition, has improved the health of occupants, and we've had lots of anecdotal evidence to that effect. Uh, but for me, the main thing is that it's developed and demonstrated the benefits of partnership working both internally and externally to the council, and it's created a template for private sector housing refurbishment. Current issues, locally the funding streams have disappeared and unfortunately our project has been on hold for the last two years. The only game in town at the moment is the Green Deal Energy Company obligation. This unfortunately is limited, creating a gap which local authorities at the moment are unable to fill due to cutbacks. Already there is uh, evidence of commercial installers working with limited funds, uh, in some cases cutting corners using the cheapest and quickest methods. Uh, which has produced a reduced emphasis on aesthetics and other less cost-effective measures. So this is a property, I actually took the photograph this week. Uh, this is a private initiative on one of the streets in Goal. You can see that they've fitted the external wall insulation, but they've done nothing with regard to the, the fascia boards, uh, the gutters, the fall pipes, but more importantly, these timber windows are the original 100-year-old windows and they've been left in place, as has the doorway and the windows at the back. Obviously, that's very concerning to us. Just to conclude with, with my considered view, that for a retrofit program to be truly successful, it must maximise its impact and utilise economies of scale. And this can be achieved by developing whole street, whole community programmes, establishing effective partnerships, adopting a truly holistic and flexible approach, having a wide range of skills within the delivery team and a, a can-do attitude, and that really is important. Engaging with communities in the pursuit of added value, we added so much to the scheme just by involving wider, wider partnerships and, and working with the community. And finally, using established trusted bodies, such as local authorities, as a lead organisation. Once again, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present to you today, and I hope you found it of interest. Thank you.